Hello everyone and welcome back to All Things Money. Today we are going to focus on this issue of net metering. Net metering of solar connections to be precise. Now we know that the prices of solar panels have drastically gone down which means energy generation or electricity generation through solar panels or through solar energy has gone down significantly the price of generating that energy. What that means is it just makes more sense to put up solars on your rooftop, but not everyone has a rooftop. Only very few selected households in the country have rooftops which can support solar panels. So in terms of net metering, there are essentially only 113,000 households out of a total maybe 35 million households in the country or just 0.13% of households which have net metering installed. Now, why is that a bad thing? I mean, it's not a bad thing. The bad thing here is that those households still use the grid that exists for everyone else. So when they use the grid, and that grid has some costs that are required to maintain as well. You can't just randomly have a grid and not pay any cost for it. So that is the thing. Whenever we talk about net metering, it's about pushing those households, asking those households to pay their fair share of having access to the grid. Why do they need access to the grid? Because the sun only shines maybe six, eight, or 10 hours a day. After that, you still need to rely on the grid. There'll be many days where the sun isn't shining, where there's cloud cover, where there's dust, where there is fog, and you won't be able to use it. So the sheer existence of grid as a backup is why you still need to pay for the grid. But when those people or those households, they don't pay for the grid and they just totally rely on solar energy without paying for any backup, the cost of maintaining that grid is essentially on all other households. The a number may be very small, but in terms of pure principle, this just does not make sense. So what do we do? Well, one thing that needs to be done here is essentially fine, net metering is good, but that needs to be restricted in terms of a household's consumption. They should not be allowed to install excess. In a lot of countries, you've got Vietnam, you've got Indonesia, they have stopped at any net metering. In India, in Saudi Arabia, it's restricted to just specific proportion of the load only. In Pakistan, there is no limit whatsoever. So that needs to stop. Another important thing here is that net metering currently only is for households which have three phases or basically households which are one of the more richer households in the country. So essentially what's happening here is we're subsidizing electricity consumption of the rich, all, uh, all other households. So this is what's happening. What needs to be done going forward? Solar is critical. No one is saying that solar should not be there. The growth of solar should be there, but solar should be more equitable. All benefits should not accrue to the richer 0.13% households in the country. They need to be spread out. You've got a lot of people, a lot of households who are off, uh, who are off the grid. They need to be brought on the grid. You've got a lot of people who do not have three-phase connections. They need to be brought on the grid as well so through two-phase connections. So we need expansion of solar with expansion or penetration in more households rather than a few select households only. So this is why a rejigging of the net metering policy is essential. When we say we need to rework the net metering policy, no one is saying that completely destroy solar or not use solar. We're just saying it needs to be made more equitable such that growth can be broad-based, growth can be across all households rather than just a few select households only.